So it's great to have young people here. One, our first speaker this evening was born in 1984, the year I graduated from college. She is a 2005 graduate of Mizzou and is working on her master's degree from Park University. She is executive director of the Liberty Restoration Project, a politically diverse group of concerned citizens who have decided to throw down the arbitrary barriers, such as political parties, that divide our nation. She also hosts the Liberty Restoration Hour online radio show where she speaks on such issues as free speech, states' rights, and the Second Amendment, among others. Her Facebook profile, however, put it best where her activities are listed as moving and shaking, confronting corruption, and standing up for you. So let's give a big, and I mean big, Tea Party welcome to Catherine Blesch. Southern Poverty Law Center intelligence report says that we're all here today because we're racist. <laughs> and did you know that that same report says that the state sovereignty movement is part of the violent radical militia movement? I'm here to talk to you today about state sovereignty. State sovereignty is a relatively new term in the mainstream political scene. But these two words hold the key to freedom from the suffocating weight that we all feel bearing down upon us by the federal government. You see, our country was designed as a union of sovereign states, a group of self-sustaining and self-governing entities who gave a very limited power to the federal government. Each state was designed with its own constitution and its own set of laws so that they could maintain the culture they desired within their borders. This is also known as federalism. In fact, the Tenth Amendment to the United States Constitution states that all powers not granted to the federal government by the Constitution belong to the states and we the people respectively. So, if you look inside your Missouri Constitution, Article 1, Section 4 says, and I quote, that Missouri is a free and independent state subject only to the Constitution of the United States. It does not say that we are subject to the will of the presidential administration. It does not say that we are subject to one party's political ideology. And it does not say that we are subject to the will of the United Nations. It says we are subject only to the Constitution of the United States of America. in the face of tyranny, and they debated long and hard about the proper role of the federal government. The United States of America was a grand experiment in freedom. For the first time, people were declaring their right to self-govern. Was that experiment successful? You be the judge, but I can tell you it won't be if the people and the states don't start playing their proper role in that equation. For those of us concerned about the direction in which our country has turned, for those of us concerned about the bailouts that didn't start with the Obama administration, mind you, the bailouts that started under the Bush administration that bail out corporations and corrupt gangster banksters, for those of us who are concerned that a standardized, nationalized education system is depriving our children of lessons in true history and depriving them of a true understanding of what it takes to be an independent, creative, and free-thinking person. For those of us concerned that the Department of Homeland Security is profiling genuinely and legitimately concerned people as potential domestic terrorists, for those of us who are concerned with the overreaching of the federal government, which is attempting to tax our grandchildren into enslavement, we do have a solution. And it lies within those two beautiful words, state sovereignty. So let's take a look for a minute at the state legislature. First of all, 
Our representatives in the state are closer to the people, both in proximity and in life experiences. It's a lot easier for you and I to drive two hours to Jefferson City to see our state rep than it is to go out to Washington, D.C. Also, these representatives are people like you and I. They own businesses, they run businesses, they work, and they know what it's like to live a life in the day of an average Missourian. Our state representatives also have fewer constituents. That means it's easier to get access to them. Have any of you tried to actually sit down and talk to your, your federal level senator or congressperson? It's almost impossible, isn't it? But if you go to Jefferson City, you can actually sit down and talk to your elected official face to face. And one beautiful thing that we have going for us here in Missouri is term limits. So that means that it is a revolving door of people stepping up to serve our state. And we do not have the problem of corrupt career politicians who think it's okay to make a career out of taxing us. eight states who have passed resolutions to reaffirm their 10th Amendment sovereignty. The most recent was Ohio just this past week. The other states include Alaska, Idaho, North Dakota, South Dakota, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Tennessee. These resolutions, resolutions do not hold the force of law, this is true, but they send a very strong message. Representative Charles Keat from Oklahoma describes it similar to the cease and desist notice the landlord would give to a non-paying tenant. These resolutions should be considered the federal government cease and desist. Stop violating the 10th Amendment to the Constitution now. Right here in Missouri, we had HCR 13, which did make it through the House, and it was sitting in committee when the session ended in the Senate this spring. But something really neat about being here in St. Charles County is that the county government here actually passed a resolution that they sent up to the state in support of state sovereignty. It is the only county in the nation to have the nerve to do such a thing. And we have Joe Brazo, who helped organize this tea party to thank for that. So big round of applause for him. ladies and gentlemen. In the 2010 elections, Missouri is going to have 64 open seats with no incumbent because of term limits. This is our chance. This is the time for you and I to get out and get involved. We need to be supporting our legislators who are submitting legislation to defend the 10th Amendment to the Constitution. People like Senator Jim Lemke, Brian Nieves, and Representative Jim Guest. They deserve a round of applause for their hard work on the 10th Amendment. If you haven't thought about it yet, I encourage you to think about running for state rep because that is what our government is supposed to be. It is supposed to be real people stepping up to serve one another and to make sure that our freedoms are maintained. And if you don't want to run, make sure that you're supporting a constitutionally minded person, no matter what party they're involved with, so that we can retake our state and retake our country in 2010. I'm really, great. I'm really grateful to be here today and see so many people. I do wish there were more young people, and I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that the amount of young people coming out increases. So thank you all, and have a wonderful day. Come